بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ آئیم آئیم انیب عباس فرام کراچی پاکستان اینڈ آئی ہیو بین بورن ان پاکستان آئی ہیو بین لونگ ان پاکستان اینڈ آئی ہیو گرون اپ ان پاکستان اینڈ ناؤ آئی ایم ارننگ مائی بریڈ اینڈ بٹر ان پاکستان ایز ویل اینڈ آئی ایم ایکچولی مائی the core response core work is actually quality assurance is my core work and i have been a certified quality profession from some reputed universities of pakistan and lead auditor for quality internationally so that's how i'm trying to assess myself with my bread and butter and uh, when i was growing up my parents just let me do whatever i wanted to do They never forced me into anything religiously or, or you know, things happen in your daily routine. They never forced me for anything. I was always grown very in a very easy environment. And uh, my parents always tried to give me as comfortable life as possible. And uh, now that's my turn to give it back. And uh, obviously when you give it back to your parents. So things they have taught you you get up by that visiting karbala visiting holy places is one of the lessons my parents have taught me and uh, that's how my intensity of visiting several holy cities and holy country iraq especially holy city karbala and najaf has been one of the great lessons my parents have taught me so this is how i'm here and uh, the connection with the karbala and the connection with the holy cities especially which belong to chahar the masumin and ahl bayt is uh, truly special for everyone and for me as well and uh, this is also part of the great lessons my parents have taught me that loving ahl bayt gives you that con- that consoles you and that gives you a pleasure that anything in this world cannot give you so that's how for those uh, pleasures we always wait for the for an air almost to get these pleasures again and again again and again when you know ashura is a morning day but it gives us pleasure it gives us relief it uh, refreshes refreshes our faith and uh, every time you raise your hand for labbaik ya husain it always grills your blood and you just move on some other level with yourself religiously and you know practically and everything so this is how we started up one day we just thought we just couple of friends were discussing that we should visit karbala because now we are mature and responsible enough to visit alone one day we discussed that another day we submitted our documents and then the other day we were waiting for some phone call whether it has a no for us or a yes for us and then uh, all of a sudden we received a call that it's a yes and your visas have arrived in a day and your tickets will be handed over tomorrow so this is how the excited uh, journey of uh, karbala began with us and uh, we flew from our city karachi within 5 days and before those 5 days we did not know that we are going to visit the holy city karbala the holy city najaf the next 5 days so it was truly unexpected and maula abbas sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam just called us on a very short notice that we just could have one backpack because we were less of time so this is how we reached karbala or reached iraq there were many challenges on the way we had some traveling issues we have some other different different issues at different different areas and then we finally started walking towards karbala from a separate route than the standard route the standard route is the pole by pole from najaf to karbala we actually started our walk from uh, baghdad we walked through the baghdad road which is a separate route than the najaf karbala walk route 
We started from there and then uh, there were many challenges. There were no Pakistani on the route. All were Iraqi is the language barrier. We don't know their language. They don't know our language. We just coped the way around, around, around. During that walk, I think it's very difficult to ignore those people serving you and keep walking. Because those people literally die to serve you. And we, as visitors of the holy uh, city, were unable to refuse them. Many times it happened that we drank water at some mock-up. And then after two stations uh, or two mock-ups, we again have to drink the water. Just because they were pleading us to have water with them. So this is how the great uh, journey of uh, Karbala walk uh, began from Baghdad Road. And uh, I remember one incident that uh, me and my friend were walking and we all of a sudden said uh, we are wishing to have, we are intended to have fish and lunch. And uh, believe me, we were just around uh, three mock-ups away and suddenly we saw someone was grilling fish there. So these kind of miracles were too much with us and Mola kept uh, blessing us through our walk. And uh, again, uh, we used to get tired, then, you know, prayers time and, you know, we slept in two mock-ups. We covered that journey in two days. And uh, the time when uh, every time we used to get tired, all of a sudden a car used to come and assist us for one kilometer, two kilometers. So that was uh, a very helpful uh, journey. And uh, the Iraqi people were too gracious, too nice, too welcoming. And they were too warm to welcome us. And literally, they, they were uh, putting their hands on our feet that please have something from our mock up because you are Zaire Imam Hussain. So we kept our journey continued. After that, when we entered uh, Karbala, we did not see the tomb, we did not see the shrine, we did not see anything. It was a hitch in the heart which told us that we are now in the radius of Karbala. You know that a different kind of feeling inside us suddenly developed because we were in one mood since we joined the walk and uh, all of a sudden our heart uh, kept saying that something is different, something, is, something different is developing. So that thing actually took us to realize that we are actually in the radius of Karbala. And, uh, it was too crowded. We cannot even uh, have our, uh, we couldn't have even have our one feet, you know, long feet. And uh, it was uh, almost uh, what we call bumper to bumper. <laughs> and uh, it was uh, not that easy to, you know, like those 80 kilometers were easier than these five kilometers because it was too jam and all of them are going to Labbaik, Ya Hussain. But when we just made to it, and uh, as soon as we entered that radius of Karbala, where we saw the shrine of uh, Ghazi Abul Fazl Abbas, alayhi salatu was salam, literally our heart just got to vanished. For some moments, we could not realize we are, where are we standing, what are we doing, what are we carrying, what are we looking at. It was unbelievable and uh, what made that unbelievable was that blisters you were having in your feet and after having those blisters in your feet you just saw the shrine of uh, Hazrat Abul Fazl Abbas salatu was salam. that was truly out of way something feeling and uh, we just all of a sudden broke down and we for some time we were shocked, for some times we cried, for some times we just kept staring the shrine. So, I think we took 20 minutes to come out of that feeling that yes, we are in Karbala. So, that was uh, one of those moments we will cherish for our life. Because uh, whenever you experience something first time, it's always special. So, that's how it was uh, very special for us. And... Uh, we were assisted uh, by the army people as well and uh, by the 
people who do checking taftish we were assisted by them as well because we had some luggage as well so they also assisted us in clearing that uh, checking stations and uh, everything and everything was fine obviously there are some goods and bads for everything but uh, overall it was uh, they were very gracious and they were good they were welcoming and then uh, again when we just realized that now we are closer to the shrine of hazrat abul fazl abbas so that glow in our eyes for that tomb was unexplainable i cannot give you words how did i feel when i saw the raza abul fazl abbas alaihi salam for the first time and uh, it might be only my feeling and others may differ from me when i got to the raza of uh, imam hussain alaihi salatu wassalam i was totally blanked out i was totally blanked out and i just went there and i just came out of them i did not uh, recite salawat i did not recite anything i did not pray there i did not ask for any prayers i just went inside i was so blank that the roza was uh, the zari imam hussain alaihi salam was near but i could not go there and i was totally blank as if someone has switched me off and uh, that i i thought mola uh, imam hussain alaihi salam is not happy with me because i just vanished out then i consulted a scholar there so they said that it's a natural feeling it happens when you visit imam hussain for the first time because the pain is so high that if imam hussain alaihi salam does not control your feel you will die so it was it was all natural it was all what i felt visiting karbala and uh, i think visiting karbala is another charm visiting the second time is an another charm but visiting for the first time and then coming for the second time this interval of first time and second time is very painful because when you come back you always regret why did i go to have food why i did not spend that time also in in the shrines and you always memorize it i was there i want to go again and you know that feeling scratches you from inside that no i i will go again and you you became become more anxious after visiting imam hussain that i have to visit again so this journey has been very uh, miraculous and uh, i just want to give a clue that many times many things happened with me which i knew are happening very miraculously and uh, they were all miracles two three miracles happened with me sometimes i saw someone uh, is uh, greeting me and when i took back there was no one so you know these type of things happen when you visit the holy lands so this is how my journey to karbala was and uh, this is the journey i will always cherish i will always look up to and uh, i will always count it as my one of the good uh, or good deeds i could do visiting karbala not other than that <laughs> because uh, i'm not the most perfect man in, or i'm not even the smallest perfect man but visiting karbala and taking this decision and abul fazl abbas alaihi salam approving this decision i will always cherish because whoever is reaching karbala is reaching with an approval no one is reaching here because he has money whoever is reaching karbala in the holy shrines is approved to reach karbala that was all from my side and uh, i will just add one last line by the end that uh, visiting karbala has made me manly than i was it has made me more manly more wise more maturity more more i've i've become more grounded after visiting karbala because they are the ones who bless you and they never tell you to hurt someone to come over someone and 
to show off yourself. They always taught you to be grounded, to be good, and to be nice to people. That was all from my side. Mm -hmm.